today we teach about suffering for Jesus. And see this, if you don't want to suffer for Jesus, you take this, you'll not suffer. If you want to suffer for Jesus, you take this, the Holy Ghost. There was the greatest Bible preacher in the world, had the largest church in the world, and Satan come to him. And Satan scares people. That's what he does. He puts fear in them. And he scared this preacher because he come with power. He's got, he rules the whole world. And that preacher took this. <laughs> they, they, they teach you to do this. You know, if you're casting out devils, hold this. And the devil said, are you going to go by this? And that preacher said, yes, sir. And the devil left him and never bothered him again. Never. Because God did not send us a book. He sent us the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives us access to God. The Holy Ghost is the only way home. Without the Spirit of Christ, you're none of His. You can take a liberty here and claim you got the Spirit, but that don't mean you have the Spirit. Now listen to this. These are the most precious words in history. Well, when when the apostle then was preaching about Jesus, they uh, called the apostles and they beat them. They beat them with whips or whatever and commanded them not to speak anymore in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and they let them go. And when they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Until you get to that place, that you're willing to suffer and you're glad that God lives in you and you're willing to suffer for him like Job did. Think about Job. Job stood up against the devil. He took everything he had, his children, all of his his uh, things, his sheep, his, his cattle and all. And he said, naked, I come in the world and naked I leave. And then Satan says, skin for skin and attacked him with his health, put soy bowls all over. Mm -hmm. And Job... <laughs> said, although God slays me, yet I trust him. So it's a fight, children, between the flesh mm -hmm. and between the spirit. You must stay in the Holy Ghost. And it's not that we enjoy suffering and pain and misery, and we don't become self-martyrs. And But what it is, is if you're doing the will of God, then you're going to be persecuted. And so instead of being... Uh, sad and miserable about it, you rejoice because you know that you belong to God and that's why you're being persecuted. And sometimes you might suffer being tested or you might suffer being chastened. But don't let this take away your inspiration in Christ because it is a good sign if you're suffering for the Lord, not if you're suffering for wrongdoing, but if you're suffering for right doing in Christ. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience. Tribulation is trouble. And when you're troubled, because we do live in the fleshly body, and we live in a world that Satan controls, and he wants to keep us in the flesh. So you're going to have trouble if you're going to serve the living God in the Spirit, and if you're going to take up His Word, His truth. So... When Satan attacks you, if I tell you these truths that God gave us, Satan will attack you. Mm -hmm. He will paralyze you on the bed. He'll haunt you through your family, through everything. And you, instead of you saying, hey, that's God in me, and Satan don't like me, that's wonderful. Most people will give it up. Yeah. Nine, 99 out of 100 give it up. Because they do not want to suffer. No. In this world today, they like to sit in air-conditioned churches and the preacher tell them they're going to heaven. Now, this is the way they write in history. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. See, God is strong and we're weak. Most gladly, I would rather glory. Glory means to, it's hallelujah. It's, it's, it's to praise God. It's to, to have honor, to glory, glory to God, honor to God. In the highest, 
I'd rather glory in my infirmities. See, he had a thorn in the flesh. That the power of Christ may rest upon you. So he said this something that they don't teach today. He said, I take pleasure in infirmities. You know what infirmities is? It's in weaknesses. And then, mm -hmm. and, 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 and uh, the lesser things. He said, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches. That's the way people do me. They reproach me because they say, you you, you took your meds? You know, you're crazy. <laughs> and, and in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So if you have enough of God in you that makes the devil attack you, you're blessed. And remember this, when, he, when you speak of when I'm weak, I'm strong, it's because in the flesh, you have no righteousness. Your only righteousness is Jesus Christ. And people that are trying to be holy and righteous in the flesh by keeping the Ten Commandments and the words in red, they're going to fail miserably because God does not accept the flesh. It's a corrupted seed. It's only Christ in you that is righteous. And so think of this. Why does Satan always condemn you and accuse you in the flesh? You did this. You did that. You're no good. You, he's getting you in the flesh because in the flesh you have no righteousness and you have no defense. So he will persecute you many times just to get you in the flesh so he can condemn you. Your only strength and your only power is in the Spirit, in the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. He is your righteousness. And Satan will persecute you to get you out of Christ and in the flesh in any way he can, even in religion. So rejoice when he persecutes you and know that you're being persecuted for the living God and his true word. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? So when you find yourself being threatened that Satan is going to take everything away from you, go through it, children. Go through it in Christ, and you will come out on the other side better for it, and you will be glad because what Christ gives you, which will be much greater than what was taken away from you, and it may not be great in this world, but it will be in your soul. And you will have your needs met that you need in this life. And you will have life eternal in the life to come. Don't give up. So, if you don't want to suffer. Then have faith in the Bible. The Bible is okay as history. No problem there. But if your faith is in the Bible and you say it's the word of God to you, then you won't suffer. Satan will not persecute you because he has you in the flesh, in the dead letter, under the law, where no one could be saved instead of in the living Jesus Christ. Close the book and come to Jesus Christ. Don't come to the book that's about him. Come to Jesus so you can really know him. So if you don't want to suffer and you want the devil to leave you alone, Go with this. Yeah. But if you want to suffer for Christ and love Jesus Christ, go with this. Go oh. by the Holy Spirit in you. The gift and promise of God is Christ in you. So knowing this, that the trying of your faith, see, faith is Jesus telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. If Jesus tells me, uh, I'm going to deliver you, then I trust him. He delivers right. me. I don't go to nobody else to try to get deliverance. That's my faith. He told me he'd deliver me. So knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. So I've had to have patience through the year. But let patience have her perfect works, that you may be perfect and tired, wanting nothing. So let God live in you, and then you'll suffer persecution. And, and you will have a, a life of persecution. But you should say, you know, I am so glad that I've got enough God in me to make the devil mad. And even if he doesn't deliver you, naturally speaking, according to the way you would think, remember the words of Job where he said, Though he slay me, I will trust him. And look what God did to him. And even the three children in the fiery furnace, they said, Even our God is able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down and worship your idol. We are going to serve the living God. And today, it's hard to find somebody like that. Now, you don't become a self-martyr, and you don't enjoy suffering. 
but you do enjoy the fact that if you're suffering because you are keeping the will of God, then you can rejoice in that, children. And even if he chastens you and you're suffering because he has chastened you, that's something to rejoice in because that means you belong to him and he loves you. And so don't give up and don't become depressed and demoralized because you're suffering persecution. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing if you're suffering because of Christ. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. If you're living godly in Christ Jesus, you will suffer persecution. So do not give up children and do not be discouraged. Now listen real close. You little children that's contending for the faith, you've got to understand something. And this is very plain. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle with scriptures. But we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle against devils. You see, we wrestle in the spirit. I want to show you some stories about wrestling in the spirit, how to help you to fight a good fight. Why did Paul tell Timothy, war a good warfare? Because, see, we're in a war. Satan was kicked out of heaven, and all of his angels came down here and said, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. we got to fight him flat-footed today. And Paul would tell Timothy, Fight a good fight, Timothy. Fight. Fight a good fight. Fight in the spirit. You don't fight it with swords and, and guns. You fight in the spirit. He said, Fight a good fight. Why did Apostle Paul say when he was dying, I fought a good fight. He fought against the devil all the way. He had a thorn in the flesh. But he went down fighting in the, in, in the spirit. Now let me tell you some things. And these are real things. These are things that has just happened and you've seen it happen right here on YouTube, some of it. All right. When Jesus told me, he sent me to Brazil back in the seventies. He was getting me out of some danger that's going to do me in. <laughs> I was surrounded, you know, and he sent me to, I was in Sao Paulo, Brazil, one of the largest cities in Brazil, 15, 20 million people. And when I went into that city, I seen a great big angel. Now you must understand this. If you're going to fight a spiritual fight, listen to me. If you're fighting against the devil, he came down here with all of his angels. Michael kicked him out of heaven and he brought all of his angels with him, a third of the angels. So Satan is transformed into an angel of light. See, he, he works in all these big preachers. All right. And here's the thing you must understand. That Satan's angels are now apostles of Christ. Now, when I was in Saul Paul, this big old angel set up our, over the city. He sits in the temple of God as he is God. Because this apostle came down with Satan because Satan told him, we will rule the world. And he sat there and he, he looked like a, a blonde-headed looking fellow. Pretty good, handsome-looking guy. Had on a, a robe-like thing with a, uh, they call it a centier, and it's a, a belt around him, a gold thing. And he had on, and this throne, he said, on had lights. It went up on this side and this side and all around back. And he looked at me, you know, and I got down and said, Paul, I was out of the Holy Ghost is in me. The devil can't control nobody with the Holy Ghost in him. He controls Everybody was this him. All right. He looked at me and he said, I rule this place. Talked pretty boldly because he ruled uh, 15 to 20 million people right there in that city. And that's what Satan gave him power to rule the whole place. He come down with him. And I told him, I said, you don't rule me. And he said, I don't like you being down here. I said, I don't particularly care what you like and don't like. Because <laughs> I resist the devil. Because I can only die one time. A brave man only dies once. A coward dies a thousand times. And I didn't care if I died right there flat-footed. When I see a devil, most people run from the devil. If their house is haunted and a demon is in it, they run from that devil. You know what I do when I see a devil? I run at that devil. And I jump right up in his hair and I tell him, you ain't got much time left on this earth. God's going to put you in hell. And he don't like to hear them things I tell him. 
Because if I jump him and he kills me, I die fighting. I'm not running from no devils. Never have run from the devil. You've got to attack him because you wrestle against him. You, like Jacob wrestled with an angel. And he was telling me all them things. And he got to looking over his right shoulder. And guess what? <laughs> this is the most exciting thing I've ever seen in 82 years of living. There was a star that was twinkling over his right shoulder. <laughs> and you know what was happening? Michael and his angels were girding on their sword. <laughs> Boy, talk about getting out of there. Them, them devils could move when them angels gets out. I mean, he moved because he could not take a child of God with a Holy Ghost in him, no matter if he ruled 15 to 20 million people. He didn't rule me. God ruled me by the Holy Ghost. And that's what's missing today. See, most people fight him with this. You can't win with this. You only win with the Holy Ghost. Now let me tell you a story you've seen here on YouTube. They some people took up this message. And I told them, I said, you can't hardly establish a church in this because this is not accepted too much in society. We're blessed to be here on YouTube telling it. But this guy named Chase, he wanted to be a great leader. He was going to be a leader of the Mark of the Beast people, you know. And he had him a program on YouTube, and, and he got up a bunch of people, a couple of carloads of them, and they was going around picking up all the people that believe this message. And I was telling them, it ain't going to work. I've been in it for 50 years, tell them, and I know what happens. And so Chase is great, great leader, you know, the great leader of the faith of the Mark of the Beast people, the Bible of the Bible. He went out to California. He was trying to pick up another person out there that would help support him, you know. He was getting the people that had money and everything. And they made a man on a placard. And they put it up over their heads. And this is what it said. They made him a placard. And they was walking around in a park out there. And do you know what? The people attack them. They attack them. And I knew they would. I've been out there. I've been kicked out of more churches than most people's ever been in. Because God's word has no had no place on earth today. And they attack them. And guess what their great leader doing? Chase. He hid in the bathroom. <laughs> now that's the truth. He hid in the bathroom. And this one boy said, he almost got me killed. <laughs> he started it and then he ran. You say, okay, why did he run? Because he wanted to save his life. He wanted to save his life. You're supposed to present your body a sacrifice to God. They had an opportunity right there. Right there they had an opportunity to die for Jesus. To give their life for the word of God. But what did they do? Every one of them ran. Every one of them came back to Tennessee and, and Ohio, everywhere they'd come from, and they backslid. Every one of them got them a new doctor. A lot of them joined up with Joyce Myers or some of these people that has a crazy doctor, and they will not stand up anymore for God because the devil attacked them, and he attacked them strongly. He was going to kill them. And back in the old days, when people was full of the Holy Ghost, and they would... Uh, shout going to the lion's den. They'd sing psalms in the jailhouse. They would die before they'd give up the Holy Ghost in the faith. These people only one little scare. Satan put the fear of God in them and they run all back to their homes and today the they're hiding under their mother's apron. That's the truth. They don't, there's no power on earth today. But when Satan attacks me, he's got to jail me. He's got to kill me. He's got to do me in and he knows it. I won't give it up. He's come try to kill me many times. And I tell him, I tell him what God told me. And I stand up for the faith. And your children, the last days are coming. If you want to love God, you make a determination in your soul. God, you give me the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to let the Holy Ghost live in me. I want the power of God in me. I want God to live in me. And like Jesus told Pilate, he said, if I tell you the truth, would you let me go? He's not going to let him go. He's going to crucify him. Why did Jesus stand up there and let him be? He said, I have this power from God. He said, I give my life. God's going to raise it up. And he died on the cross and suffered for us so that we'd have life. And when the Holy Ghost came upon him, Peter before had denied him. But now Peter stood up and said, you killed the Son of God. And today I'm telling you, I don't care how much I have to suffer. How many millions and billions of people reject me? 
The Holy Ghost is what lives in our temple. This is God. This is the only thing Satan will attack. He's about wiped out all the Holy Ghost people on the earth. Today, these people that has this, when they go to the American Eastern buildings, the Word of God, you know what they think suffer, suffering is? If it rains on Sunday. <laughs> That's the truth. Hey, hey, it rained last Sunday. I couldn't go to church. Now that's suffering. So listen, children, times are coming that your flesh life's going to be taken from you and all you're going to have left is like Job, the skin for skin, Satan. All you got left is your faith in God. So keep your faith. Keep the Holy Ghost. Sing to the lion's den and let them kill you. You're going to die anyway. So die for God. Let God live in you and do not give up your faith and Jesus will, and his angels will be waiting for you. When you, when they put a tag on your toe, the angels will come and get you. If you'll stand in this faith, this is the word of God and times are coming that you're going to have to have faith. Where is your faith? Is your faith in the spirit? Is your faith in Jesus Christ? Or is it in literature? So have faith in God. Let Jesus fill you with the Holy Ghost and let him live in you. And then you give up everything for God. You present your body a sacrifice for God. And you tell the devil, I will not bow down to you. I don't care if God delivers me or don't deliver me. I'm not going to obey you. And listen to what I'm telling you, children. You've got to have this grit, this true grit, because it's coming. And hard times is coming. And you're going to lose a lot of your flesh things. And all you're going to have left is the Father of Spirits. So stand up for him in faith. Mm -hmm.